Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to start the hearing for the Assembly Health Committee for Tuesday, April 21st. A couple quick announcements before we get started. First, time limits for witnesses. We will hear two witnesses per side with a time limit of three minutes each. Additional witnesses after that, please state only your name and organization for the record and your position on the measure. For our consent calendar, we have the following bills proposed for consent. Item 4, Bill AB 344, Assemblymember Chavez. Item 11, AB 745, Assemblymember Chow. Item 15, Bill AB 1114, Assemblymember Bonilla. Item 19, AB 1149, Assemblymember Wood. And item 22, AB 1216, Assemblymember Bonta. And for clarity, removed from the calendar, the, the following bills have all been removed from today's agenda. Bill AB 508, Assemblymember Garcia. Bill AB 911, Assemblymember Bro, And AB 1027, Assemblymember Gatto. We will start, I see Assemblymember Brown here. We'll start with item number three, AB 299. And we are starting as a subcommittee because we don't yet have a quorum. When we have a quorum, we will establish it, establish it and uh, move forward from that point on as a quorum. Whenever you are ready, Assemblymember Brown. Thank you, Mr. Bonta. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. First of all, I want to say I am accepting the committee's suggested amendments. AB 299 will require the Department of Public Health to create a drowning incident report for all non-fatal and fatal, fatal drownings. In California, drowning is the leading cause of injury-related deaths among children under five. This bill will require first responders at the scene to fill out a form with specific information and submit it to their local county health and, count, and the county health will then send the numbers to DPH. The data would be used to help direct drowning prevention programs and prevent the unnecessary loss of life. I have with me today two witnesses that will tell you a little bit more about the bill. Um, Matt Payne and Joe Powell, and they're from the Rialto, California Fire Department. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members. Uh, AB 299 is a, a very important bill to me personally. This is a um, effort that we have in regards to saving uh, kids from drowning, being the leading cause of death from children under the age of five in the state and the second leading cause in the nation. Uh, one of the main problems that we have right now with this is the lack of data and information that we're able to collect from these scenes. Uh, our form here in AB 299 allows us to collect that data uh, information in regards to the events leading up to the drowning and to the uh, event itself. One of the things with this form is that being able to take that information, we can then create drowning prevention programs and we can tailor drowning prevention programs to go after specific needs. Currently, drowning prevention programs, we have to uh, put out every effort that we can to cover as many topics as possible. Uh, but if we were able to find out a specific issue and be able to tackle that issue, we would be able to make a, a much bigger dent into that. One of the problems that we currently have is there is no form that mandates that right now. There is no regulations through either county or state that requires us to collect information in regards to drownings. And with not having that, sometimes that information is not collected. A uh, captain or paramedic easily will fill out the information, could put that into a computer, and instead of putting down the code as a drowning, could put that down as a CPR, which they were doing to the patient at the time, and that information in regards to that drowning is lost, because when you do a search for it later, it would not come up. So this is a form that would allow us to capture that information and would basically have California being a leader in the nation. No other state does this yet, um, and it would be... Uh, for me personally, like I said, just a great, great effort from the state to be able to put that forward at both the local area so that we can focus in San Bernardino County where I'm from, uh, LA County would be able to focus at their specific issues, and then the state would be able to have data and information of overall. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and members. I'm Joe Powell, Emergency Medical Services Coordinator for the City of Rialto Fire. And uh, I'm obviously in support of the bill. 
Um, without this bill, without the data, we are just shooting in the dark, trying to find some way to, to save uh, these children's lives. We really need the data so that we can focus on what we're trying to accomplish and focus on saving children's lives. Uh, and so you know, a quick example, we uh, in the city of Rialto had a, a significant drowning problem for a, a, number of, uh, a number of years. And we went back and looked at the data and we tried to figure out what, what are we gonna do to prevent these drownings? Do we need more lifeguards? Do we need more training? And we looked at it and we found that a large percentage of our drownings were wearing street clothes. They weren't even intended on swimming. So then we could focus our data and decrease the deaths, which we did in our city. Thank you. Seeing a quorum, I'm going to ask uh, Madam Secretary to call the roll. Bonta? Here. Mainstein? <coughs> Bonilla? Burke? Chavez? Chu? Gomez? Gonzalez? Present. Hernandez? Lackey? Here. Nazarian? Patterson? <coughs> Ridley Thomas? Present. Rodriguez? Here. Santiago? Steinor? Here. Thurmond? Here. Waldron? Wood? We've established a quorum. We have a motion and a second. We have additional witnesses in support. Mr. Chair and members, Tim Madden, representing the California chapter of the American College of Emergency Physicians, and just wanted to thank uh, some of Member Brown and her staff for their help in uh, providing some clarifying amendments, and with those, we are in strong support. Thank you. Mr. Chair and members, Dawn Kepke with McHugh Kepke & Associates, on behalf of Safe Kids California, an affiliate organization with the Child Abuse Prevention Center, in strong support. Additional witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Please come forward. Uh, hello, uh, Chairman, members of the committee. I'm John Robinson. I represent the California Attractions and Parks Association, which represents all the state's themed water and amusement parks. I'm also representing the California Travel Association, which represents the state's travel industry. Uh, we support water safety. We commend the uh, first responders. We commend the fire department. We are absolutely uh, in favor uh, of more safety and preventing injury and drowning. Safety is what we is a, is a first priority of everything we do in all of our parks, whether they're water parks, hotels, or otherwise. The problem we have with this bill, as it is now, is that it requires us to obtain information which we are not legally entitled to and which will be impossible for our, our employees to obtain. For example, uh, this form would be mandated to be completed, and we would assume since it's a mandated state form that it would be every box would have to be gone through. There are certain things which we cannot determine from our park employees, whether they're trained as an EMT, if they're trained as a pool lifeguard. They don't have the legal authority to determine things such, for example, as drug and alcohol use. Our people, when they see an incident, uh, are busy responding to it to determine whether a person has been using drugs or alcohol prior to attending a water park or a water attraction requires toxicology tests. It requires a blood or a breath test, which is something which cannot be compelled by our parks, which can only be compelled by the proper law enforcement uh, authorities. We can't determine what somebody has necessarily been doing, whether it is a factor. So if we check that box and say it is not a factor and uh, uh, litigation ensues later and the, some other agency determines that it was a factor, then our report now is in error. Also, likewise, we can't always in these uh, situations determining the ethnicity of a person is not always apparent. We have no authority to determine or find out whether a case has been uh, referred to a CPS, Child Protective Services. We don't have the authority to find out whether this person had a history of swimming lessons and where, the identity of other responders. I mean, there's a lot of wonderful information that, that could be collected, but what it, it exposes us to an inability to 
to complete a form required by the state. So we will be in violation. We won't be able to provide accurate or full information. So it, it's a great concern for us. Also, you'll have everybody, every first responder down the line required to obtain the same information from the pool, let's say a, a park employee to the EMT responding from the county or the city to the police to the fire. So you're going to have four or five different forms in some cases all reporting the same information. It is unlikely that those will be coordinated and uh, consistent with each other. So it brings up an issue uh, of who has the ultimate responsibility to determine this information because in the hectic in Sir, the, you, uh, you're at your time please wrap up okay in, in the hectic situation of responding to a life-threatening water incident this information is not the priority and it cannot be obtained we don't have the legal authority to obtain it additional witnesses in opposition See none. Questions from committee members? Assemblymember Ridley Thomas. Yes, to the gentleman that just spoke. I don't think that we have anything on file uh, from you. I don't know if the committee does, but it appears that we did not. Did you not have enough time to get it to us? No, we've been waiting for a legal analysis and amendments that came in yesterday. We were hoping would answer our questions and put the uh, responsibility on the, the uh, certified mandated state and county employees to track this. Uh, the lawyers came in this morning and said they don't feel that the amendments achieve that. So uh, we will have a more formal response from uh, various organizations at a, a near date. All right, because we didn't get any head up on that. I don't know if the author no. did, but I would encourage you to work with the, the actual author who seems to have pretty strong subject matter expertise uh, right. on this issue. And uh, the bill's been moved. I moved the bill because I know that she understands her district quite well. And I don't know if your clients do, but we want to make sure that we have real dis disclosure of what your mm -hmm. concerns are. Because all of what you said could have been written and articulated prior to the amendments that we see today. Right. We, we did meet with the office and the staff and raised our concerns on this. Um, it's moved rather quickly along with a lot of things. I'd be happy to Another submit comment. the comments formally. Yes, uh, yes. That's, that's the typical process from what I understand about sending things in writing as we put things in writing. Ms. Brown, you understand your district quite well and you understand the Southern California region. Uh, uh, this seems like a, a great bill. That's why I moved it. I hope that we can get this uh, uh, move forward and continue the dialogue. <coughs> Yeah, it's unfortunate that um, so many children die before they're, this is the leading cause, or second leading cause of death, children under five. But I think that um, my expert witnesses would like to have a response, if they may. Okay. Um, Ms. Um, Assemblymember Ridley Thomas, would you like to hear more from the witnesses, or are you satisfied? You know, these gentlemen came off work today. Uh, you all know that you have a fine representative who knows what she's doing. You don't have to respond for my edification. I think it's clear that the interest of uh, public safety are advanced with this bill, and I moved it already. I was just quite surprised to hear a, 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 what was in effect a filibuster with no literature or previous documentation or indication of the committee. Thank you. Assemblyman Rodriguez. Yes, I also want to thank the member for bringing this forward. As you know, as my experience as a first responder, and many of these drownings I've uh, responded to. So I just had a quick question. The form they're looking to fill out, would, be that, would that be a form already attached to the EMS report maybe that they can just rip off and, and give, or that would be just a separate form that they're going to be doing? Uh, that would be a, a separate form okay. uh, because currently most of the EMS data in the state is going to an electronic form Correct. right now. So it would be separate from that because the um, patient care record would be HIPAA protected where the uh, AB 299 form okay. doesn't have the HIPAA information on there so it's not needed to be protected. So we're able to get that and then share that with the county health agencies so that we can collect that data. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, thanks, Arthur, for this bill. I'll be supporting this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Additional questions or comments from members? See none. Uh, thank you for your excellent presentation. My recommendation is an eye on this. I do want to encourage the opposition. We, we did not get a letter from, from you, so it's helpful to provide those earlier so we can consider your arguments for uh, in opposition and um, as we see appropriate, include them in the analysis and make a re recommendation based on them. So this is the first committee in the first house. I would encourage you to uh, follow that process going forward to assist with a, uh, a more robust uh, process with as much input as possible. Uh, we have a motion and, and a second already. Um, 
Please call the roll. The motion is due pass as amended to appropriations. Bonta? Aye. Bonta, aye. Mainshine? Aye. Mainshine, aye. Bonilla? Burke? Aye. Burke, aye. Travet? Chu? Gomez? Aye. Gomez, aye. Gonzalez? Aye. Gonzalez, aye. Hernandez? Lackey? Aye. Lackey, aye. Nazarian? Patterson? Ridley Thomas? Aye. Ridley Thomas, aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Rodriguez, aye. Santiago? Steinorth? Aye. Steinorth, aye. Thurmond? Aye. Thurmond, aye. Waldron? Aye. Waldron, I Wood. Aye. Wood, I. Thank you. The bill passes 12 to 0. You're out of committee. Congratulations, Assembly Member Brown. I have another bill. So, um, you have your next bill. Excuse me. Um, file item number 27, AB 1518, Aging and Long Term Care Bill that you're presenting as the chair. Please proceed when you're ready. <clears throat> Again, Mr. Chairman and members, I'm here today as chairperson of the Assembly Committee on Aging and Long-Term Care. For the first time ever, a majority of the members of the committee elected to introduce a committee bill. This is a first for aging and long-term care. AB 1518 will help wean our state off the default and most expensive settings of setting of long-term care. This will be in favor of less restrictive settings in the community, preserving access to nursing homes only when they're needed for the people who have the most severe care needs. Nursing homes throughout the state provide an important service to the medically, in, the medically dependent individuals. However, oftentimes, people who have long, lifelong medical needs choose to live in a community, a right affirmed in the 1999 Olmstead decision. Community life <laughs> offers a measure of independence and opportunity to self-direct. That's why we have the Nursing Home Acute Facility, or a Medicaid waiver. The, the one thing that really um, touched me, or, or, or I think touched me more on this, was that it cost $72,000 to uh, keep someone in a, in a facility. But we can keep them at home and it would be $50,000, a little over 50000 So it's really, really good that people have an opportunity to stay home. I would like to invite Deborah Doctor, representing the Disability Rights California, who is the sponsor of this measure, to, to speak. Thank you very much, Ms. Brown, and thank you for your leadership with this committee to bring this bill forward. It's really a wonderful thing for us. Yes, I'm from Disability Rights California. I will speak quickly. Um, the bill, as Ms. Brown said, is to give people choices in where they receive long-term care. I bet none of you are dying to go to a nursing home. <clears throat> and this bill gives people a choice to receive services where they want to, which is generally at home, which is not just a good idea, it's the law, and it's also cheaper for the taxpayers. This is an issue we've been working on for over a decade, and we have had clients who have been in every one of the situations we're trying to fix. And I'm going to take 30 more seconds to speak for a young man from San Diego named Raul Carranza, who's 25 years old. He um, is ventilator dependent, he has muscular dystrophy, he uses 24-hour nursing care. He was in college when he turned 21 and aged out of the EPSDT waiver, which is Kids Medi-Cal. At that point, his home nursing hours got cut 50%. He didn't get any better on his 21st birthday, but his hours got cut in half. He dropped out of UCLA had to go home and live with his family again, and spent the next three years fighting to get his home nursing back, which he finally did. He's back in college, and he wants to have a career in public service. So I'm here for 
him and for all the other people with disabilities, including seniors and children we represent. And I ask for your I vote. Thank you. Thank you. Additional witnesses in support? Any witnesses in opposite support? Please come forward. Hello. Good afternoon, members of the committee. Um, here, uh, my name is Christina Boss Hamilton. I'm representing UDW AFSME Local 3930. Our members are IHSS workers who provide care for people in their homes, and uh, we're here in strong support of AB 1518. We know it's a very wise policy decision in terms of saving money for taxpayers and also doing the right thing in terms of keeping people at home where they belong. So we want to express our support. Thank you. Thank you. Additional witnesses in support? Seeing none. Witnesses in opposition? Seeing none. Any questions from committee members? No questions from committee members. Chair Brown, would you like to close? I ask for your aye vote. Thank you. We have a motion. I, I want to just make a propose a friendly amendment that the motion should be due pass to aging. There are no amendments, and I don't think it's going to appropriations at this time. Okay. Suggested amendments for the next committee, but none taken yes. now. Right. Uh, I think you were you were the movement assembly member Ridley Thomas. Is that acceptable to you? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So we have a, we have a amended motion and a second. Due pass to aging. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Bonta? Aye. Bonta, aye. Mainshine? Aye. Mainshine, aye. Bonilla? <coughs> Burke? Aye. Burke, aye. Chavez? Aye. Chavez, aye. Chu? Gomez? Aye. Gomez, aye. Gonzalez? <coughs> Hernandez? Lackey? Aye. Lackey, aye. Nazarian? Patterson? Patterson, aye. Ridley Thomas? Aye. Ridley Thomas, aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Rodriguez, aye. Santiago? Stein North? Stein North I Thurmond, aye. Thurmond I Waldron, Waldron I Wood, aye. Wood I. The bill passes 13-0. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, committee, and chair. <laughs> thank you, Chair Brown. <laughs> Next, we have file item number 10, AB 741, Assembly Member Williams. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members. It's great to be back in health committee, even if it's only for one day. Uh, AB uh, 741 is designed to fill a gap in the continuum of crisis care for children and youth but, uh, by expanding the definition of social rehabilitation facility from exclusively adults to include children. Expanding the definition creates a category of licensing and state statute for the children's crisis residential services. Currently, an estimated three out of every four children in the U.S. that need mental health services do not receive them. Nearly 20% of high school students in California consider suicide, and more than 10% actually attempt it. Yet, 47 out of 58 counties lack any child, adolescent, psychiatric, hospital, inpatient beds uh, for children under 12. There are fewer than 70 beds statewide. So members, in most of our counties, when one of your kids or one of my kids uh, end up needing crisis care, they get exported to the few parts of the state where there are these facilities. And m members, if you've committed suicide and your support network is in Santa Barbara County or, or uh, in one of your districts um, being exported out to a part of the state where they have no support network is a problem. Uh, I have a couple witnesses. I'll turn it over to them. Very briefly, Carol Schroeder from the California Alliance of Child and Family Services. Imagine, if you will, a nine-year-old child is experiencing intrusive thoughts about killing himself or somebody else. It's become so severe that his mother fears for his life or the life of one of her other children. Outpatient mental health services are unable to meet his needs. His mother takes him to the emergency room where he's assessed and medical personnel try to locate a psychiatric hospital bed. The nearest facility is four hours from his home. He must be transported by ambulance. His mother, who relies on public transportation, cannot accompany him or visit him. Uh, as, the, as, uh, as Mr. Williams said, 47 of California's 58 counties have no psychiatric inpatient beds for children or youth, and there are only 70 beds statewide for children under age 12. Half of all beds, not surprisingly, are in Los Angeles. There are only two remaining community treatment facilities, both of those in Los Angeles. Um, 
AB 741 would provide a crisis residential option for children and youth by broadening the, the definition of social rehabilitation facility to include children, thereby creating a category of licensing and state statute for children's residential for children's crisis residential facilities, and would further provide for federal Medicaid matching funds by describing the links from mental health uh, rehabilitation center uh, to psychiatric residential treatment facility to social rehabilitation facility. We ask for your I vote. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Jody Cusson. I'm with Casa Pacifica Center for Youth and Children in Ventura and Santa Barbara County. And we are one of the few agencies that do provide exclusive mobile response services for children with acute crises, meaning those who are wanting to kill themselves, harm themselves. Our age group is getting younger and younger. At one time, I think the reason we didn't have hospital beds for under 12 was because we didn't see children under 12 who wanted to kill themselves. And unfortunately, today we do. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for our children in the United States, second only to accidents. And many of the accidents we think are actually unreported suicide. What we don't have is an option for what to do with our kids. We can hospitalize, which is hard because there aren't enough beds and they're far away and people have to travel and the families can't go with them. Or we can try and help them um, as best we can with the limited amount of services available. So what we're hoping is we will be able to provide services like crisis residential for children just like youth, uh, just like adults are able to receive in our state so that we can keep similar to what you heard in the last bill presentation, we can keep children and families at home and in their communities while we wrap the services around them and take them out of an acute state of crisis and out of wanting to hurt themselves and hook them up with the services they need so that we can provide strong mental health for them in the future as well as strengthening our local communities and raising them up. Additional witnesses in support? Rusty Salix, California Council of Community Mental Health Agencies in support. Thank you. Any other witnesses in support? Uh, Sean South on behalf of the California Primary Care Association in support. On behalf of the Steinberg Institute, I'm Maggie Merritt, and we're in support. Kevin Jones, on behalf of the California chapter of the American College of Emergency Physicians, speaking in support. Thank you. Additional witnesses in support. Seeing none. Witnesses in opposition? Seeing none. Any questions from committee members? Seeing none. We have a motion and a second. Assemblymember Williams, would you like to close? Respectfully ask for your aye vote. Thank you. The, the motion is due pass to appropriations. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Bonta. Aye. Bonta, aye. Mainshine. Aye. Mainshine, aye. Bonilla. Aye. Burke. Aye. Burke, aye. Chavez. Aye. Chavez, aye. Chu. Gomez. Gonzalez. Hernandez. Lackey. Aye. Lackey, aye. Nazarian. Patterson. Patterson, I. Ridley Thomas. Aye. Ridley Thomas, I. Rodriguez. Aye. Rodriguez, I. Santiago. Stein North. Aye. Stein North, I. Thurmond. Aye. Thurmond, I. Waldron. Aye. Waldron, I. Wood. Aye. Wood, I. The bill passes 12 0. Thank you, Member. Thank you, Assembly Member Williams. Next, we have file item number 20. Excuse me. File item number 13, AB 791, Assemblymember Cooley. Uh, 